Hello, good morning to everyone. I'm Debbie with Studio MD AZ, and I am coming to you from sunny, beautiful Naples, Florida. So it's a gorgeous day, and since I'm out of my comfort zone, I'm normally in Scottsdale, Arizona, but uh, I'm here for a few days to spend the weekend with my family. So. Anyway, I'm so glad you're here. We're gonna give it a couple of minutes. I'm going on just a couple of minutes early so that our Ho Ho Home for Christmas event can get my video over to their page, my live over there. So in the meantime, let me say hi to everybody. Uh, hi, Karen. Hi, everybody. Hi, Shelly. Hi, Shelly Sacklin. Thanks for being here, my friend. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Norma. Hi, Mary White. I am, I am Jimmer this morning. Uh, I just had a nail crisis a, like two seconds ago, but it's okay, we're good. Hey, Patricia from Scarborough, United Kingdom. That's awesome. Thanks for being here. Hi, Iwana. Uh, Kim Whitmore, you're here. I was thinking you were still gonna be in bed. Gail Richards, Debbie Stewart. Hi, guys. Hi, everybody. Mary Nutzman, hi. Let's just give it a second. Um, uh, as you know, when I'm doing the uh, the craft marathons, we try to keep all the, you know, the romper room hellos to a minimum. But, you know, it kills me. I can't stand it. Hi, Jennifer Martin. I can't stand not doing it. Hi, Joanne. Thank you. I'm all dressed up in my, you know, torn up jean jacket. Hi, Melissa. Hi, Jean. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Sharon Halverson. Welcome. Hi, Misty Fears. Good morning, everybody. Hi, Vicki Nance. Thank you guys so much for being here this morning. To all my girls that um, are so supportive at all times, I appreciate it so much. Uh, Andy Hinkle, you're in Coral Springs. Hi, Michelle Lawrence. I'm so happy to see you again. I've missed seeing your name. Hi, Janine Olney. Hey, Karen Harper. What's happening in Arizona? Hi, Susie Berg. Hey, I just wanna say, uh, I've been following with other crafters till about two o'clock this morning. Thank you so much, Janine, <laughs> thank you. Um, everything is going on with the tornado and we have a number of crafters that are right in those, in those towns, in those cities. And so let me just say on behalf of our entire crafting community, you're, you're being prayed for, your, your areas are being prayed for uh, big time. We, all the crafters prayed last night. And so anyway, um, just, just know that we are worried about you and praying for you and thinking about you as I know everybody is and especially for those other crafters that are um, right in line. So anyway, we're praying that it's starting to slow down a little bit. Uh, did, uh, no, no, uh, I know you, you know, that's interesting. You buy stuff like this nowadays. You buy it all torn up and you pay good money for it. So, okay, good morning, everybody. Hi, Sylvia. Um, I know it is beautiful, but I'm, I'm nervous that it's gonna be dark for you guys and it's a little hard for me to see my camera, but let's get started. I have a great little project for you guys today. And if you're not familiar with Studio MD, AZ, Hi, Antoinetta. Hi, Micheline. Uh, I also have Czech Savvy Sisters and Czech Savvy Sisterhood. And um, so we are known for checks. We're known for black and white, uh, blue and white, uh, royal check, parchment. And today we're going to be known for pink and white checks. And so, hi, Gail Dobbs. I hope you guys are doing okay, everybody. Yeah, prayers for sure. Okay, guys, so I got this darling little glittery house. It's just like a paper mache. I got it at um, Target. It was just $10. And I, I'm hoping they have them. Uh, my virtual assistant, Callie, is probably online. My mom, Barbara Corona, and my uh, full-time admin, Kathy Spang, should all be on here with some links and things for you. Unfortunately, we can't find this online this morning. You might have to go to <laughs> Nancy Lewis. I just saw your comment about my blue blazer. It's still a sore subject, so we're not gonna talk about it today. But anyway, um, you, you might be able to still find them in the Christmas section at your Target. So just letting you know, I'm really hoping the sun, I figured, I didn't think about the time of day, but anyway, we're gonna do the best we can. 
Okay, so they have this, and obviously it's just it just comes all white, and it has these little green trees. Well, when I saw it, I thought, oh my gosh, this would be so darling, super glitzy, and blingy, and sparkly. Hi, everybody. I know, it's gonna be adorable. Hi, Sandy, hi, Sandy Fink. Um, okay, you guys, you know it's killing me, but I'm just gonna keep going. Uh, anyway, we're gonna do uh, pink and white, um, really soft uh, checks and we're gonna put it on a stand. We're going to bling it up, and um, I think you're gonna be excited because I'm gonna show you a technique for pink and white checks that so many people love. Uh, Betty Whitemore, that's exactly right. So, all right, this one came. I already did half of it because um, with 45 minutes, I wanna make sh sure that we have plenty of time for me to do all of the blinging, which is my favorite thing in the whole world all the embellishing. So it had these little trees on it, as you can see, and I popped them off. They came off really easy. Watch this one won't. I was like, oh, they came off super easy. Oh, there you go. Popped them right off. So look what I found. I found these at Hobby Lobby and they're mini, the mini pink trees, they're adorable. And so I thought, okay, I'm gonna add these to my house and I needed to come up with a color that would match the trees pretty close. And so I grabbed a couple of colors and you can see, I don't know if anybody's ever told you, but I have great eyeballs. I can see, I can see colors really, really well. I can color match. It's one of my hidden talents and probably one of my only, but uh, I, I, do, I do see color really well. And so anyway, I'm gonna mix these two to give us a, um, like more of a uh, softer pink. So I will put these on afterwards, but I just wanted you to see how darling they are and how cute and what this whole thing is gonna change everywhere. So, all right, let's get started. So I've already done this side and I haven't softened it yet. So I've just got the checks laying in there. And so let's do this side so you can see exactly how we do it. So I always start in the middle of my project and here's why. I wanna have the equal uh, size of checks on both sides of my project. I don't wanna have one side that's got like this humongous check and then this side just has a teeny tiny one. Uh, Barbara, it is my God-given talent, thank you so much. Uh, okay, so I'm just gonna go straight in the middle with a ruler. This is a half inch ruler. They're hard to find, but if you can find them, grab them. It's the one I use all the time. Uh, it's also the same size as a quilter's wand. So just FYI, but a quilter's wand we have found for the most part doesn't have the measurements on it. It's just a plain half inch. So I'm also doing a very light hand. I'm doing a little bit darker for you guys so you can see um, thanks so much, you guys. Hi, hi, hi. I know, I wanna say hi to everybody so desperately, uh, but thank you. I'm using a really light hand because when we do black and white checks, you can do as dark as you want on your drawings, but when you're doing something lighter like this, you can't. So all I've done is I did a line on either side of my ruler. I moved it over one space so that one side of my ruler is on the line and then I'm gonna draw a line on the other side. Super simple. And I'm gonna go all the way down my project on both sides doing that same exact thing. Uh, top and bottom, easy peasy. And then you've got a great size checks for both sides. And now I go right in the middle horizontally. So we've already done the verticals and now we're gonna go horizontal and we're just gonna skip over those little windows. Do the same thing. You guys, this is how, if you've never watched us do checks or if you've always wanted to do checks, this is exactly how you do it. And you will always have um, really, really nice, perfect checks. Uh, Jennifer Martin, you found the flexi ruler yesterday? That's awesome. Okay, then I'm gonna come back up this way and hopefully we're gonna end up with um, at least similar, it's hard to eyeball something like this, but at least similar sizes on both sides. And um, if not exact, if you're one of those, you know, perfectionists, it might not be exact, so you gotta get over it, uh, cause nothing is, but this way you will have at least really close. Okay, so now I've got my checks on and look at that. These are all half inch checks, so they're half inch square. And now I'm going to take my paint. So what I'm using is, and for the record, I do not have my screen flipped. 
it's a nightmare for crafters to have our screens flipped. It just, you gotta trust me on this one. It is a nightmare. We hate it because we can't see where anything is. So it's not flipped. So I'll, I'll help you through this, but this is a folk art seashell pink. That's the color I'm using for my lighter coat. And I'm also using a folk art wild rose. This is a gorgeous color and you can always tone it down with white if you need to. So uh, if I was going to just buy one pink, it would probably be the wild rose because you can do so much with it. Um, oh, I just saw somebody else just picked up one of these boxes. 75 cents each. Okay. Oh, the rulers. I thought the boxes were on sale for 75 cents each. I was going to say that is an incredible deal. Okay. And then I just need a tiny little pool of each color on my paint because we've just got a few checks to do. And um, Kathy Spang and Callie and whoever else is on for my team, if you guys will make sure we've got links up and that you all give me uh, times. I have till 11:15 uh, East Coast, so keep me on track. Okay, so this is called double loading your brush and I am also using a Zen level two number four brush. The reason I use these is these brushes are short, fat, and flat. Uh, and I always say, keep all your comments to yourself, but these that's what these brushes are. They're short, fat, and flat. And when I'm doing a pink and white, normally when we do a black and white, we do a drag behind it. We're not gonna do that in this case because it's pink and I don't want any other colors on here. The next thing I'm gonna do is put an X just a little mark in every other box. That's what, that way I know which ones I am supposed to paint. Uh, so for instance, if somebody walks in the room, you're, you know, somebody calls your name, there's a million things that could happen. So as long as you have a little X in every other box, it keeps you on track and it keeps you from uh, doing two side by side that are the same color. And trust me, even as long as I've been doing this, I, I screw it up all the time. So, and now I just start painting in my, in my boxes. But what I want you to do is put your brush right in one of the corners. It doesn't make a bit of difference which corner, but I'm going to put it right here just so that you can hopefully see a little bit clearer. I'm going to have my brush right here in this corner so that the top of my brush is on my side line and the side of my brush is on the bottom line and I'm just gonna get in that corner and I'm just gonna pull straight across. And the only reason I'm going horizontally right now is because I'm on this edge and it's the only way I can get in here. So I'm going straight across and what happens when you do this is you can see when you double load your brush, you're going to get a beautiful mixture of colors. So let's do this one right here. I've got my, um, I'm gonna offload in the center first. That's critical because you always have way too much paint on your brush get on those lines. This is a teeny tiny little area, you guys. So you just gotta be careful. And when I get to the bottom, I flip my brush because you can't go at a bottom this way. It's never gonna work. You have to go sideways. And then I'm gonna come over here, do the same thing. Always offload first. So again, double load your brush, grab a little bit of the dark, flip your brush all the way over, grab a little bit of the lighter color, wipe it on your plate one time to see what you've got and then go to your check so this is a funky one i've got a lot of paint on that brush and these are teeny little checks so i'm going to offload a couple places get in there get on this one and all of the softness but i also want you to see how close i came on these i mean oh we can't hold on there we go let me get out of the sun look at how close yeah, good eyeballs, I told you. I mean, that that's really, uh, every time I nail one of those, I get so happy about it. Okay, so I'm coming up here, offload. I'm gonna grab a little bit more of the lighter color right here because um, I can see that it's already starting to pull a lot darker. And then I'm also going to add a white drag over top, but I really do think you guys are gonna love this. So hopefully, um, you know, in that two minute instructional, you figured it all out. But let me just say, I have a website. It's www.studiomdaz.com and the girls will put up some links. And I have about, I don't know, probably, I, I don't know, maybe 50 to 100 tutorials on there. And I have a number of free ones and a number of paid ones for any type of, um, 
checking, striping, colors, anything you can think of that you would like to check on, I've got a tutorial for it. So you can go over there and check. You can also catch me live uh, at least once to twice a week here on Studio MD and I do a different project every day when I'm on there. And then also I'm on um, a few times a week on my other pages. So would love to have you follow me. I'm also on YouTube. I mean, yeah, I, I'm, I've got people that have me everywhere. I, most days I don't even know where I'm going, but Anyway, I'm so glad you're here. And as you can see how fast this little project can go when you've got something this tiny. And I'm gonna get in here. And I'm not worrying about getting anything on the gold because I'm gonna show you how to clean that up. Did I get everything? I did. Okay, look how cute that is. So again, right now it's a little bit harsh. So I'm going to come around the front and give that a second to dry and then we are going to tone everything down a little bit. Okay, so same thing on the front. I want you to, I hope you guys are able to see this. I know the sun is really coming in. It was so perfect, like a half hour ago, it was totally perfect. Okay, so I'm going vertical, and now I'm going horizontal, and I'm just trying to line up where I was on the other side, so at least I'm close. And again, same thing, you've got to just work around all your little uh, issues, which is the roof and the door. And for those of you that know me, you know, all I wanna do right now is get to the embellishment part because that's my favorite. So, okay. So I'm going to double load my brush again. Do a little mark in every other. you see, you really gotta kind of think it through where that one would be. So that would be right there. Okay, I'm really hoping you can see. I'm gonna go this way this time. All right, I'm gonna offload on a couple of them because I have a lot of paint on that brush. Get in there, get right on the lines. It's either a push or pull. And that's why we love these little brushes because uh, the brushes are so stiff that they don't spread. In other words, when you are in a store and you're looking for a great brush, because I tell everybody, it's the brush that is the key to great checks. Hi, everybody. I will go back. I promise. I'll go back and read every single comment. And um, I, I do see you, just so you know. But when you're in the store, if you're in like Michael's or Hobby Lobby and you go, I wonder if this is a good brush, put it on your hand. And if the bristles don't spread, that's a great checking brush. Let me show you the difference. This is a wash brush. This is for sealing and, well, that's actually a really good brush. Hold on, that was a terrible example. Um, this is a wash brush that does like basic base coating and sealing. And you can see the, the bristles spread all over. So when you get into your check, it's gonna spread outside of your line. So um, that is why you always want a, a nice stiff brush when you're doing checks or stripes to keep you in line. So if you're gonna, if this is something that you'd be interested in doing, this would be a great little project because it's, it's quick and um, it's easy and it's a, it, you're, you're able to easily clean everything up in this. Let me get on this side, you guys. And uh, if you missed the colors, I'm using seashell pink and wild rose. And they are great pinks. Okay, so that's done. And now I wanna do the back because I'm a nut job about making sure that every side of your project, no matter where you look, looks great. And the reason I do this is because a uh, hundred years ago, I was, um, trying to sell my wares to this little boutique. And I was so excited and I was like, oh yeah, my stuff's amazing. She's gonna love me. She's gonna love my stuff. I'm super excited. I'm hitting the big time. And I walked in, I had a meeting with the owner. And uh, so for the record, I'm do doing the same exact thing again. I am just double loading my brush. I'm just using a bigger brush. That's all I'm doing different, double loading. And I'm going to just get right on the line. So when you're doing stripes, you're just pushing as far down as you can go and still have paint. And there's paint on the other side of that brush, so now I'm gonna come down. 
and then you're ready to start filling in. Um, honestly, you guys, the brushes, the brushes are the game changer. And all my ladies will tell you, until they started doing this, they, it, it, it never looked like this. Anyway, so I'm in this little boutique and Pepper is the owner and uh, she came out, come on back. I have my little project. And um, I was like, what do you think? And she said, okay, well, first of all, let me just tell you, I would never sell that in my, in my boutique. And I was like, what? And she said, never. And she said, let me tell you why. Your work is fine, but your product is not professional enough. It's not finished all the way around. So I was devastated. Walked out of there, my whole, you know, my whole dream of my future is over. But you know what I did? I went home and I finished it. And I finished it on every single site. And from that day forward, it's given me the best lesson I've ever had. So sometimes that rejection, rather than walk away with your head down and never come back again, you, um, you take that and you run with it. And so now that's what I teach. And some of the ladies have even said when they have people buy their stuff, the people comment like, oh my gosh, you, it, it looks beautiful from every side and it should. Now I'd love to tell you that I went back to Pepper and she had all my beautiful stuff in her store. <laughs> I never went back there. I was definitely afraid of her at that point, but I do finish all my stuff really well now. So that is a good lesson. And also you don't know, like if for instance, if I wanted this on my centerpiece on my table, I don't want the people sitting on the back of the table having to look at nothing. I want it to look, you know, so that they have something cute to look at also. Keep in mind, I'm doing this upside down and backwards for you guys, so. Okay, but look how, just to have something on every side. Can you even see me, you guys? <laughs> Or what I'm doing. I feel like I've got that sun just blaring in my face right now. Um, okay, so we've got that done. The next thing I want to do is tone down all of those checks because they're all, even though they're the right color, they're the right tone, but for what I want to do, they're still a little harsh. Just checking my time real quick. Okay, so I just have some regular folk art whitewash. That's all it is. You could use titanium white. You could use any of the whites. And now this is called, what we did earlier was uh, double loading your brush. Now what we're gonna do is called dry brushing. So I'm gonna dip in my white and I'm gonna wipe it all right back off on my plate. I want just barely any paint on that. Otherwise you're going to um, have it be runny. You can see fine. Okay, thank you so much, Tracy. Okay, now watch. I'm just gonna tone these down with some white. I'm just doing one line in the middle of each of those checks and look at how it just softens it and so now we want to do that and you see how fast that was uh dip in wipe off and what the other thing this does it hides a multitude of sins if you've gone over a little bit somewhere over your line a little bit or anything it will it will hide any issues you might have so grateful that you guys are here today and I hope you watch all the other crafters. Um, you are in for a treat because up after me is my dear friend, Chris Hunter and her husband, Bruce. And so they are coming up right after me. So stay on, um, they will be on the Ho Ho Home for Christmas page. Uh, and then all the crafters will be there and you can just keep watching the rest of today into tonight and then uh, what's today? Today, Saturday, and then all day tomorrow. So, but you see, it just gives it a nice finish. Uh, the weather will dry paint out faster. Yes, that is true. It, it certainly will. Um, you love the color. I'm so glad everybody loves the pink. All right, now let's do the little door. So I just want to do the door and then we're going to start embellishing. Same thing. I'm dipping in the light flip my brush all the way over, dip in the dark, wipe it on my plate, see what I've got, I love it. And now let's just go in here and straight base coat this little door. I think it's gonna give us just enough pink that we need. And then I have a new product that I haven't, um, at least for my people, I haven't even shown them yet. So um, I've got a new project. I'm, product, I'm sure it's not new to all of you, but it was new to me 
But look at the difference now. It's really starting to come to life. But I never paint anything with just one color. Uh, I feel like it, um, I always say, I feel like it makes it look primary. When you do a couple of colors, it just gives it that wash that you need for just a prettier hand painted look. Now you can see in here because I did, now I have to look at it, isn't that pretty? It looks like it's got like an ombre effect. So, okay, that's it. Let me just double check, make sure that's it for painting. So I've got this little stand and I wanna do the same thing and all I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna check it, although you could. Um, I cannot see a thing, just so you know, I cannot see hardly anything in the screen. So I'm just praying that you guys are seeing what you need to see. Uh, I'm going to grab a bigger brush because all I'm going to do is the exact same thing I just did on that door. I'm double loading, wipe on my plate, see what I've got. I gave it a little bit of a base coat. It was wood prior and I did a before shot. But you could do all kinds of things. If I had more time, I would probably do some checks on this um, just for some interest. But um, for lack of time, we're just going to base coat it. You know what else would be darling on this is white polka dots and um, the size that you would need that would be perfect is the end of your paintbrush. So in other words, if you've got um, that side of your paintbrush is a perfect polka dotter, the key to polka dots, good polka dots, is having a fresh coat of paint, um, like a fresh puddle. So look, here's my, here's my brush, the end of my brush. I'm gonna tap it one time on my plate just to get rid of that. When you pull it up, it gives like that, I gotta say it, it gives that nipple effect and you don't want that. And then, it, you just touch it and it's a perfect, well, that was not a perfect polka dot. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, brother, real, real TV. Get in there. Again, trying to do this backwards. Okay, forget it. Do as I, <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. Oh, brother, hold on. I'm gonna get one of these that's gonna work for me. Well, okay, you're gonna have to trust me on this one. Just trust me on this one. It really does work, but for some reason, I think as that paint is so wet, it's just sliding right off. So just pretend like we didn't do that. Anyway, white polka dots on this would be adorable, or you could use the your eraser. Wouldn't make a bit of difference. And I'm also gonna put a little bit of gold on this because I want it to, um, I want it to pull together with the house and I think it's gonna need a little bit of gold to do that. Watching my time. So, okay, the polka dots look darling and they do work. Surely tell everybody, it really does work. Oh, that's funny. I, I feel like you guys, I have, um, I'm starting like this blooper reel for all my lives and I feel like every single day I go, oh, there's another one. There's another one that's gonna be in my blooper reel. Um, and if you guys don't mind sharing this to your pages, that you have no idea how much that helps all the crafters out. The hearts that you give, believe it or not, those help. Just Facebook sees that and they go, oh, people like her. We might try and put her on more. So uh, if you guys don't mind sharing this to your page, that would be awesome. And we call it uh, either art of checking or sharing the blessing, spreading the joy. Okay, so again, what I love about the two-tone is it gives an ombre look. So that's ready to go. And we are done painting, except for I'm gonna go back and do some gold when that dries. Uh, paint is drying out. Uh, love it. Uh, Linda, I got the church at Target in the Christmas section. The Christmas wrap section in my store it was all the way in the back. So. Okay, now I'm gonna take some just plain white paint. Let me clean this up a little bit. I'm just gonna grab some just plain white paint because I need to clean up the bottom just a teeny bit where it's got pink on it. Not that you're gonna see it because I'm going to put what's called snow text on this. I'm also going to put diamond dust on this. So it's going to glitter and sparkle like crazy. 
but I just don't want that pink to show through anything. So I'm just cleaning that up really quick. Okay, so the snow text is really interesting and you guys have probably used it. I've just never used it before. Ugh, hold on. So here's what it looks like. So it's just called Deco Art. It's by Deco Art. And by the way, we are an affiliate for Deco Art and they are one of the best companies ever. They supply us with so much paint whenever we need it. So if you ever go, oh, I wonder which paint company to go buy from. Uh, Deco art for sure. Okay, and then it goes on like, I don't know, plaster, frosting, something like that. But it gives it, it's going to give this a total snow look everywhere. And you just put it on, you could put it on with a paintbrush. I like to put it on with a craft stick because it just makes it more, um, sometimes the brush, uh, I can show you, but sometimes the brush puts it on almost too perfect. And I want just a snow look. And I am glad because um, even though I'm kind of covering up the pink that I had that was around, um, you could still you could still see it through if I see through it if I didn't do that. And it's just a hit and miss. And I just love anything with more texture. And that's all this is giving you is a little snow look. And look how simple that is. Thanks for the hearts. I know I love it. And then when we put all of our bling on this, our diamond dust. You can't even believe how this is going to transform. And somebody just told me about a um, Facebook page. If you guys are not aware of it, go check it out. It's called um, Upcycle It. And I was on there yesterday, I believe, and I added the, I did a blue and white toile Santa that I'd gotten the Santa at Goodwill and he was red and all chipped up and he looked terrible. His eyes were all messed up. And so I re-loved him and I base coated the whole Santa in white. And then I decoupaged a blue and white twall napkin on him and he's absolutely gorgeous. And I put him on that site, uh, I think yesterday. So anyway, go, go look at that site. It's all like people's before and afters, how they change things and it's just a cool site. All right, I want a little bit more in the front. And though, even though they've got this mixture on the top, I need to just, for good measure, I need to add a little bit of this to it also, just so everything makes sense. And when I do the diamond dust, you guys, it's gonna collect in here so perfectly. And that's it, and look at, so. All right, there's that. Snow text, whoops. Snow text is what that's called. So if you've never seen that before, you can get it at any of the craft stores. You can buy it online. Go grab that. Okay, so we've got our little um, trees. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna think what I wanna do next. I think what I'm gonna do next is seal it. Let's get some sealer on this and then we'll put the trees on. Uh, and I'm using, uh, again, by Deco Art. It's called Duraclear. And it's a high gloss uh, because I love that super glossy look on everything, which makes it almost look like porcelain. So that's what I'm gonna use as a sealer. And then, I know I keep saying it, and then we'll be ready to embellish. And let me make sure my glue gun is hot. Yeah, it's super hot. One of the crafters the other day said, girls, before you go on, remember to plug your glue gun in. And I swear, had she not said that, I think it was Misty Fears actually, had she not said it, I would have been completely hosed because I had com I had totally forgotten about, you know, you get everything ready except the glue gun, the most important part of my project that day. And um, if I can show you this, if I can get the light just right to show you the difference that the sealer is going to make. But you want to do your sealer before you start doing all your embellishments just so it's completely done. Let me see if you can, you should be able to see. Anyway, it, it does, it just puts a wonderful sheen on it. And FYI, when you are going to attach something like this to something like this, paint on paint does not stick. 
So had I painted the bottom, which generally I would, and I will go back and do it, to be honest with you, because if it's sitting on a fireplace mantle or a shelf, they're gonna see that bottom and it looks terrible. Paint on paint does not adhere. So you don't wanna paint the top of, um, either just leave a hole cut out here or don't paint the top of here. Just a, it's just a quick FYI. All right, let's seal this. I'm really excited for you guys. You gotta hang with me till the end uh, because I'm excited for you to see how this is gonna turn out. And you gotta stay till the end so that you're ready to watch uh, Chris Hunter and Bruce next. I think we've had, uh, we've already had well, a full day. It was all day yesterday. Started at 7.15 in the morning. We've got 56, uh, 56 crafters uh, and everybody is doing something completely different. And this is a great way for you to meet other crafters and see if there's somebody that you might want to follow on a more regular basis. Okay, so let's get our trees down. And again, these are just the little mini trees. Hobby Lobby, they were $4.99, half off. Smoke and deal, smoke and smoke and deal because they're perfect for this project. And they came with four and I'll show you what I'm doing with the fourth one. Let's get all this stuff off. I normally have my like bolt cutters. Uh, let's see if I can get this off. There we go. I'm just gonna fold that over because I can't get that off right now. Okay, and I'm going to hit this with my new favorite. One of the other crafters showed this the other day. Hi guys. <laughs> Vicki, thanks for being here. Um, I am so sorry, you guys. I don't have an opportunity to say hi to everybody. So now I'm going to move. It would have been too hard to get the snow on with the tree. So you're probably saying, why didn't she put the trees on first? Too hard. So I'm just going to move it around a little bit just to get a clear space. This is the most incredible um, glue. It's called Stick Fast. So I'm going to put a little bit of that on because it takes a second to dry. So in the meantime, I'm gonna hit it with one shot of hot glue. And that hot glue is what's going to give me my temporary hold until the stick fast is solid. And then it's just, well, let's see. I might have too much. Um, let's try it again. I might have too much of the snow there. This is what I always say. You guys know when you're home crafting, it's like, it's a crapshoot. You never know what's going to happen. Sometimes you have these great, fabulous ideas that nothing ever comes to fruition. So I see it's the same thing for us. We are just kind of spitballing with you. Oh, I love those trees. What a huge, huge difference those made. Uh, and Kathy Spang should be, what did you just say? 10 minutes? Okay, we're good. I say this every time and then I literally, the last two minutes, I'm in a total panic, you guys. But I am loving, loving, loving that. Look at the difference that the trees made. So, okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is I wanna hot glue this tinsel and this is vintage. Uh, it's is a vintage, um, like a white cream, tinsel garland and I just bought it on uh, I just bought it on Amazon and it's a half inch white tinsel garland that's all it is but look just that alone I'm so sorry if you guys can't see I'm praying you can that alone makes such a huge difference get that down come around that corner and I'm gonna go all the way around because you know you guys will never forget her name either, I guarantee it's Pepper. So every time, it's like a WWPD, what would Pepper do? I think about her all the time, every time I'm gonna like, you know, do something halfway and not do it right all the way. And I go, oh, that would Pepper. Pepper would have nailed me on that one too, so. Hopefully my trees are holding on on the other side. If not, we'll re-glue. But I love, 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 love this tinsel. It's just enough to make a big difference. All right, we lost one, I'll put it back on. And normally, obviously, when you're at home, you have a little bit more time to let everything dry for a second. Okay, let's cut 
that off. Get my tree back on. Let's see if that'll stay. Okay, I have this most incredible piece of bling that um, one of my followers sent me, Marianne Shine. It is absolutely gorgeous. And I thought this would be so pretty. I want you to see what I'm thinking. I thought this would be so pretty right here, but I need to add bling like to make it look like Christmas lights. I want to add bling around the roof edge, if you know what I'm saying, because I want it to look like Christmas lights. You guys, it's all in the details. It's all this little stuff that makes all of the difference in the world when you're crafting or when you're doing anything. I used to have an event business called All in the Details for that reason. It's this stuff that most people don't think to do. They would go, ah, oh, it's fine. No, why don't you take it up one more notch? So, and it now it looks exactly like Christmas lights. Well, maybe not exactly, but it looks a lot like Christmas lights. And I'm going to just do this, like I said, on every roof line. I might have to uh, Okay, real quick. Kathy, keep me keep me informed. I saw I think we're at about five minutes. Um, I want to get this top part done so that I can put that big piece of bling on it. And while I'm doing that, I want to show you how I, I really wanted a wreath for the door. And so, let's see. This, by the way, this trim I'm using, it's Robert Stanley trim. It's just a Robert Stanley rhinestone trim from Hobby Lobby. And it's awesome. Okay, so I needed a wreath for the door, but I didn't have one. And so all I did is I took one of the trees, so there was four trees. I took one of the trees and I trimmed it all up and made it really thin. And all I did was flip it around and made a little wreath. Um, so let's get that, I think I wanna put it right here. Oh my gosh, this really is adorable. I mean, this is definitely something I would, I would have. I always say, if I, if I wouldn't have it in my house, I'm not gonna make you make it. But this is something I would definitely have. And let me do one here. And since I'm here for the weekend with my dad and my stepmom, um, I haven't told them this yet, but this is going to be their little gift for the weekend. Whether they want it or not, they're getting it. Um, okay, let me do this ledge really quick so that we can get our big bling on. And like I said, I'll go back and answer all the questions, I promise. Um, oh my gosh. Okay, so let's see. Where is this gonna hit? This is gonna hit here. And it's gonna hit here big time. Try and get that centered. Look at the difference. Kathy, where am I at? Uh, I think I've got like five minutes. But see, Kathy, I don't know when you put that up. So, I don't know. All right, come on, you guys. That, that's a major heart, heartage right there because that's so pretty. We've got a couple more areas. I think I'm okay. Maybe somebody in my family would come out here and tell me when it's uh, 11, uh, 14. So that I don't, I don't wanna run into Chris and Bruce's time because I'm sure they have something spectacular planned. Isn't that crazy? Okay, one more. Um, I still can't see. It'll be interesting for me to play this back and to be able to even see. Normally I can see everything that's going on all the time, but uh, I can't on this one. Hot glue. And you guys, I'm just using hot glue. That's all I'm doing. Okay, so I'm just gonna do that side and we're gonna hit it with some diamond dust and we're gonna call it a day. And I will post pictures so you guys can see the finished product. But 
but I couldn't be happier with it already. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, Diamond Dust. If you're not familiar with Diamond Dust, it, you, it's uh, Floorcraft is the maker. I buy it on Amazon. This whole container was $14, and um, I, I dumped half of it out because I didn't want to uh, travel with all of it. Uh, this will last me till the cows come home. I'm not even kidding. It's, it will last forever. And all I'm gonna do is add a little bit of sealer, a little bit more sealer on this. And I'm gonna shake the diamond dust onto it. I've got two minutes. Okay, I'm gonna shake the diamond dust onto it and watch what's about to take place. So this is just a sealer. And I'm, I'm just gonna do it over this because I'm gonna throw it away. I'm just gonna add a little bit of diamond dust. And look at what that just did. I hope, oh, I hope you can see it. I can't tell if you can see it or not. It is all glitter. And I'm going to do the entire house in that glitter. And um, let me do it here. Hopefully you can see this front. Can, sorry, I look like a nerd, like I can't see a thing with my glasses, but um, it's just the glare. Okay, let's do this whole front part. Normally, you guys, I would be doing this into a container that I could use again, but how beautiful is that diamond dust? And so, like I said, I'm gonna do the entire house like this and, um, you know, just pray that my, my family would, would be thrilled to have this in their home. I think they would. If I had had any issues with the gold, just for the record, I would have cleaned it up with a Martha Stewart or a plaid. Um, totally gorgeous. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Pamela Taylor. I'm so glad you guys love it. So sorry. I couldn't see your comments. Um, but like I said, I will go back and watch everything. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's the diamond dust is a game changer. And if you want to put it on a stand, let's see, you got to just figure out where your center point is. Ta-da! I think we did it. All right. Uh, time, time, time. Okay, Kathy Spank said time. Thank you so much, you guys, for being here. Please stay tuned for Chris Hunter. She's a riot, and so is her husband, and you'll love them. And um, follow me on Studio MDAZ and check Savvy Sisters. I love you all. Have a fabulous rest of your weekend, and I'll see you next time. Bye.